So that's Einstein and Gödel. I think they're going to take the next one. Yeah. Why? Oh, just to not crack. It's not a problem at all. You can have three times as many people in this elevator. Well, maybe two and a half times. Jim Simons. Dr. Simons. Dr. James Harris Simons. I remember thinking, I never met anybody like this before. Wow. Complete outsider, mathematician, was a code breaker. Jim was a very unusual person who operated in a different sphere than I did. He's had at least three amazing careers. This great mathematician, great businessman, great philanthropist. He was always going on the move all the time, thinking, thinking, thinking. How the mind works, to how the universe began, to the fundamentals of mathematics. He was extraordinarily spontaneous and witty. A lust for life and adventure. He could see the possibilities in things. A pioneer of quantitative investing. His decision to retire from business and devote his wealth to doing real and permanent good. He donated literally billions of dollars for scientific and mathematical education. He is one of the great men of our time. Smart, kind, generous, curious, creative, and loving. Jim always sat there. I always sat there. I fell in love with Jim the first day I met him. I remember thinking, why am I acting so silly all the time? And I realized that I was happy before and after. <laughs> So this is the young Marilyn and a young Jim. He was very cute. I said, I think I love you. It only took two days. Talk about love at first sight. That's what it was. It was love at first sight. It was the beginning of a wonderful relationship. So, you know, first to me, he was a great mathematician. I was familiar with uh, the impact of Chern Simon's theory on physics um, long before I knew who the Simons of Chern Simons was. Well, there it is. Chern Simons has become ubiquitous in, in physics of various sorts. At this time, we had no idea that that would be the case. I didn't even know any physics. He did profound work of his own and built up the math department at Stony Brook. I was Jim's first student. He told me, don't waste too much time uh, reading literature. Read enough about a problem and then go off and think slowly, carefully. Jim would fall asleep in a lot of lectures. When he woke up, he would catch the end of the talk and still ask interesting questions. <laughs> For five years, he didn't do anything but turn it over in his mind and get to the bottom of it. And what came out was the solution of the two of the biggest problems in topology. Okay. Jim worked for the Institute for Defense Analysis. Jim was one of the original code breakers. And at a certain point, um, he got very active in opposing the war in Vietnam. And his relationship with the Institute for Defense Analysis was terminated because of his public opposition to the war. He was absolutely a patriot. <laughs> I, I, I like to say, getting fired could be Good, good, but you don't want to make a habit of it. <laughs> when I was a kid, my doctor, he said, you know, you're a smart Jewish boy. You should become a doctor. I said, no, I don't. I said, I want to do physics or engineering or math or something like that. And he said, yeah, but you can't make any money doing that. Jim always enjoyed a good game of poker, was fascinated by markets. Quantitative modeling of risks could enable you to make money. Which worked out uh, uh, remarkably well. 
exceptionally well. And uh... <laughs> we've made a ton of money at Renaissance Technologies. He really transformed quantitative finance. We must have been up to 70 million. And I said to Jim, wow, when did you make this money? A successful moneymaker in modern finance, Jim Simons. Jim Simons' medallion fund has done 39% net of fees for three decades, which proves that it works. That is correct. 66% per year. Single most successful hedge fund in the history of the industry. So successful that he became known as the quant king. What is it like to be a billionaire? What is it like to be a billionaire? <laughs> I think it's especially nice to be able to help other people. As he started to earn money, I suggested to Jim one day that we just start a foundation. I just had a cardboard file box in my closet, and I did the accounting myself. It was a learning curve, a steep learning curve. We support basic science. Science and mathematics is the bedrock of our civilization. Jim felt investing in it is investing in the future of humanity. If we make this investment in this area, will we have an effect on how that particular field moves? You don't necessarily know where it will lead, but there is the potential for progress through new understanding. You get smart people together. Everyone talks to everyone else. You provide the best infrastructure and make everyone partners. Okay, everyone get in. Five and six are astronomy, seven and eight are biology, nine and 10 are quantum physics. Hi. Hello. So I was just trying to demonstrate that there, people do work in CCQ. <laughs> yes. And you must be a quantum physicist. Yeah. And you like it. Yes, you a have lot. To say, you have to say that. Well, of course, I have to, but I also want to, so. <laughs> I guess everybody was interested to hear from Jim what was the secret to his success. I'm not going to tell you the various predictive signals and so on and so forth, uh, unless, no, I'm definitely not. <laughs> but I do have guiding principles. These are principles which even without articulating them to myself, I have followed. These principles I think are important principles, not just for Jim, but for the foundation as a whole as we go forward. I view them as our guides. Jim's rule number one, do something new. If it's the latest and greatest thing to do, don't do that. You know, even though the Simons Foundation has a lot of resources, it would only be doing interesting things if it was doing something that the other funding agencies were not doing. Number two. Surround yourself with the smartest people you can find. The real secret sauce is that we start with great scientists, first-class people who've done first-class work. He said, you're either on board or you're not. So I said, okay, I'm on board. Jim always picked the teams where the scientists bounced ideas off each other, like good jazz musicians. And Jim loved jazz, and he loved the interplay of ideas and those conversations, that collaborations that work that way would be more effective. And he would meet regularly with everyone, but he did not micromanage at all. His third one was be guided by beauty. Jim had a deep belief in beauty. Things that worked well, that fit together well. When he did things like build his boat, Jim really built and designed it. Jim was really interested in creating and building things and institutions and uh, having an impact on the world around him. Don't give up easily, stick with it. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. But after that, try something different. Hope for good luck. You get a lot of good luck, but unfortunately some pieces of really bad luck. He was neither flattered too much by his good luck, 
nor disillusioned too much by the bad. You know, I, I knew him when, right? When he didn't have all this money and he used to drive a beat up car full of cigarette butts and so on. He never was in any way pretentious. He was always the same person. And the person was himself. Jim not only didn't follow the pack, after a while, the pack realized where Jim was going was the place to go. The foundation has had an enormous amount of impact that's out of scale even with the amount of, of money that the foundation has invested in, in science. It's about raising the ceiling, enabling people to truly excel and rewarding those who truly excel. Pushing frontiers of knowledge in all different areas. I love that. We support basic science of mathematics, physics, computer science, biology, neuroscience, genetics. I think it's important today. I think it was an important 50 years ago, and I think it will be important 50 years from now. I won't be around to see it, but uh, nonetheless, that's the way I feel about it. I have great confidence we're gonna learn something important. <laughs>